All right, so mirror symmetry, a homological mirror symmetry played a key role. Okay, except now we have to convince this guy to switch slides. So I've um, described uh, exactly how the theory is discovered and why is it essentially inevitable um, in other places, in particular um, in the two uh, talks at the Simons Foundation Conference in 2021, uh, Homological Mirror Symmetry Conference. So, um, you didn't have to be at the, these talks to follow this one. Uh, rather, uh, it is that uh, in this talk, I will uh, mainly focus on the final answer and not so much on why. So uh, let's pick a Lie algebra, which uh, for simplicity, oops, is uh, either a Lie algebra of AG type or a Lie, algebra, or Lie super algebra, GL M slash N. We'll take a Riemann surface, which will be uh, an infinite complex cylinder with punctures that come in pairs. Okay, so this does not work. Um, labeled by minuscule rep uh, representations and its conjugate. Well, we'll also uh, consider a collection of, of curves, um, a matching which ends on pairs of punctures colored by complex conjugate representations. To uh, every pair of such matchings, so the two matchings are um, colored uh, red and blue, to every pair of such matchings, you can associate a link in the Riemann surface times time. Uh, when you get a link from uh, this pair of matchings by uh, taking the red to always underpass the blue. And arbitrary links um, arise in this way. To the Riemann surface um, with um, punctures labeled by, by uh, minuscule representations of the Lie algebra, we'll uh, associate a category. The category um, will be a category of A brains uh, on an exact symplectic manifold Y, which is equipped with um, a top holomorphic form and a multi-valued potential. This category uh, will be a variant of uh, familiar derived for Kaiosidal categories. The target space um, is uh, a product of symmetric products, one for each um, node of the Dinkin diagram. Um, a point in Y is a collection of points on our Riemann surface, uh, which are colored by simple um, positive roots of the Lie algebra. The objects of the category are graded Lagrangians on Y uh, and uh, more generally twisted complexes over them. Uh, grading, which turns a Lagrangian on Y into an object of the, of, of the category is a choice of a lift of phase of, uh, of this function uh, to uh, a single value function on L. The cohomological grading of the a brain is a choice of a lift of the phase of the holomorphic volume. So in particular, the change of orientation of L shifts the grading by one. Um, the category is uh, that of equivariant a brains because uh, multivaluedness of the lambda gisbert potential introduces additional gradings in the theory. Um, they come from the choice of lift of W uh, to a single value function on L. So uh, to a pair of red and blue matchings um, and hence to the corresponding link, um, we will associate a pair of a brains which are objects of our category. The uh, link homology, the, the um, quantum group link homology, uh, will be uh, the graded space of morphisms between the two brains. The Euler characteristic uh, is simply the equivariant intersection number of brains, which is the count of intersection points keeping track of gradings. Um, the fact that the Euler characteristic is a quantum link invariant is um, guaranteed to hold by construction. Namely, uh, this follows uh, from picard lapsus theory and the fact that the equivariant central charge function um, on the category of A-brains, uh, which is simply the period of um, 
omega e to the minus w on your Lagrangian, the fact that the center equivariant, because w uh, is only non-zero thanks to equivariance, setting w to zero, you get a standard central charge function. Um, the, the, the whole thing is naturally called the equivariant central charge function if you do include w. Anyway, this equivariant central charge function is a close cousin of conformal blocks uh, of, the, of, the, of the conformal block of the affine Lie algebra associated to G. Namely, uh, the conformal blocks of the affine Lie algebra have integral formulation as, um, as lambda gisbert period integrals, um, with, um, which differ from the equivariant central charge by insertions of some chiral ring operators. And what you recover in this way is exactly um, the integral formulation of um, conformal blocks of uh, Fagin and Frankel and Schechtman and Vartan. Uh, uh, you're asking why is this guy a vector and what kind of a vector he is? Well, uh, the, the rank of the, this, this vector is um, the, um, the the, the, the size of the of the corresponding weight space. So you're you're asking about um, zero weight subspace of the tensor product of representations of either G or the corresponding point group. Uh, actually, uh, morally here of G. Anyway, in what follows, I'll describe this category and how to solve it um, exactly. Um, so also we we'll learn how to compute um, the resulting homology theory for any link, and we'll learn why um, the resulting vector spaces are themselves link invariants. So we'll start um, with two simplest examples when um, the Lie algebra is either SU2 or GL1 slash one with uh, links colored by their uh, defining representation and its conjugate. Uh, the theory associated with SU2 will be categorifying the Jones polynomial the one associated to GL1 slash one uh, will call a categorify the Alexander polynomial. So if we take the Lie algebra uh, to be GL1 slash one, a Riemann surface has um, two D for some D marked points, here D is two. The even half of it, somebody should mute themselves. So the even half of which are labeled by um, the highest weight of the fundamental representation and the odd half by that of its conjugate. If we pick the Lie algebra to be SU2, then the 2D mark points are of the same kind because the fundamental representation is self-conjugate. In both cases, the Lie algebra has a single simple root. Um, the Dinkin diagram has a single node. The node is fermionic for GL1 slash one and bosonic for SU2. Um, the target has in the in both cases um, is um, uh, a single copy of the symmetric product. Um, um, it's a symmetric product of uh, D copies of the Riemann surface. Um, big, we are always taking the Riemann surface to be C star. Um, you can open it up to a plane if you want, but. Um, if you want to solve the theory as I'll explain, you want the Riemann surface to be C star or C. Uh, so a point in Y is the collection of D unordered, not necessarily distinct points on the Riemann surface. So in the GL1 slash one case, um, the top holomorphic form coincides with a standard top holomorphic form on a semantic product of D copies of C star apart from um, first order poles along half the punctures, along the odd punctures. In the SU2 case, um, the holomorphic form um, differs from the standard top holomorphic form in a different way. It has um, instead a first order pole along the diagonal in the symmetric product. Diagonal is where um, a pair of points coincide on the Riemann surface. So this exemplifies, as you have, you, you found simpler examples of this uh, in uh, in one of yesterday's talk, where the importance of the choice of holomorphic form in formulating this theory was exemplified in, in simpler settings. So the potential in each case um, is a sum of two multi-valued um, holomorphic functions, W zero and W one. Um, so we'll take the lambdas uh, to be fixed complex parameters. 
and we'll normalize W so that uh, DW is a pair of one forms uh, with integer periods. The grading um, associated to Q, Q of the quantum group, will come in our conventions uh, from W not uh, being not single valued. Um, w1 not being single valued is associated to the grading you get from the Riemann surface being a cylinder as opposed to a plane. <clears throat> so um, a Lagrangian in the symmetric product is a product of D one dimensional curves on the Riemann surface, which um, we take to be non-intersecting. <clears throat> So given the link, um, we'll get a pair of A-brains that are derived from the corresponding red and blue matchings. Um, pairing these matchings, if you recall, we get a link. So in both theories, um, the Lagrangians, which we'll associate to caps, uh, we'll call I-brains. They are simple products of intervals puncture. Uh, picture. The fact that these brains are, are sensible objects of your category um, for that fact, um, um, the um, ex uh, exact nature of W is important. Namely, W has um, uh, 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 W zero has has pole has logarithmic poles along the puncture. So, um, so these brains don't just end in random places; they are the special places. So, the cap brains, which will um, denote by E, will be products of closed curves whose homology class is um, proportional uh, to the class of these, um, of, the, of the braided caps. So when the Lie algebra is SU2, the cap brains uh, will be products of figure eights. If the Lie algebra is GL1 slash one, they're products of ovals. And again, in each case, um, this is the choices essentially unique um, by asking the uh, resulting object to be a graded Lagrangian. So um, the link homologies will be the homologies of the floor differential um, acting on the vector space on the floor complex, um, so, um, which is a vector space uh, spanned by um, graded intersection points of the brain with the action of the floor differential on. Uh, so for GL1 slash 1, the fact that the other characteristic is the Alexander polynomial is a co corollary of work of Manolescu, uh, Oswald, Salvo, and others. Um, actually, unlike in their original formulation, um, this formulation gives you the Alexander polynomial on the nose, as opposed to the Alexander polynomial up to some prefactor that depends on the link presentation. Um, <clears throat> so this um, description of the categorification of the Alexander polynomial um, by Hager floor theory was discovered in 2003 uh, by Oswald and Sabo. Um, our particular variant of it has some minor uh, novel elements. Um, in particular, the lambda Ginsburg interpretation is new. Our solution of it will also be um, slightly different than what people do in the context of Hager floor theory, but the details are minor. The difference is a minor. For um, the Lie algebra uh, SU2, the fact that the other characteristic computes the Jones polynomial is the theorem of Bigelow from the ninth. Um, so our description of categorification of the Jones polynomial and other quantum link invariants um, by this family of floor theories um, and associated Foucault uh, derived Foucault categories is new. So uh, the action of the floor differential on the floor complex is defined by counting holomorphic maps from a disk to Y of Maslow index one, such that the superpotential W pulls back to a regular function on the disk. And um, I remind you that in defining Y, the choice of holomorphic form matters, top holomorphic form matters. Um, the corresponding symplectic, what the, it's important that a corresponding symplectic form is compatible that is compatible with omega in the sense that the, the, the real volume form you get from omega wedge omega bar is the same one uh, that's or proportional to the one that you get from the symplectic form. Anyway, rather than computing the action of the of floor differential by counting holomorphic curves for which um, there is no general alg algorithm, we'll explain how to sum instant tones up. So in for formulating um, thus, um, and actually formulating the entire theory, 
homological mirror symmetry plays a role, plays a key role. So the categories of brains um, on, uh, is generated by a finite set. The generated set of brains um, is um, uh, always a product of real line Lagrangians that avoid the punctures up to isotope. Uh, for uh, all but um, the Lie algebra GL1 slash 1, the brains will be uh, will get equipped by extra structure I'll describe in a moment. Because these T brains um, generate the, um, the category, we have equivalence of categories where um, D sub A is the derived category of modules for the endomorphism algebra of the generators um, in the underlying A infinity categories. In, in other words, um, the home spaces here um, are just generated by intersection points of the T-brains. The equivalence of categories comes from the Uneda functor, which uh, maps any A-brain um, to a complex of modules for this algebra A. The consequence of that equivalence is that um, as any brain in a, uh, um, in a, in a category, uh, the braided caps have a description as a twisted complex every term of which is a sum of generators. Um, this complex is a direct sum of T brains together with a differential, which is a degree one operator um, that squares to zero in an appropriate sense. And it describes how to uh, obtain uh, your original Lagrangian by um, roughly by taking connected sums of, of brains. We'll understand later exactly what this means. Now, the T brains are projective modules for their endomorphism algebra per definition. So the, this complex is a projective resolution of the A module corresponding to um, the, these braided cap brains. The reason I'm talking about only half of the brains that you need to, the, the, to, the, to, um, to get a link invariant is as follows. One of key but uh, simple, one of simple but key properties of the set of generators is that the cap brains, the other the other brains that you need to get <laughs> to get a link, um, map to uh, simple modules uh, for the algebra, for the endomorphism algebra of the T brains. They are simple modules because the only non-zero morphisms from the T brains to the I brains are. Um, uh, well, there's a perfect pairing between them in this sense, okay? And they are only in um, uh, homological um, and equivariant degree zero. So in algebraic sense, the T brains are projective and uh, the cap brains are among the simple modules of the algebra. Um, uh, it, it's essentially a, a quiver a path algebra. Um, uh, I'll explain what, what, what these algebras are like. Okay. So um, given the description of a braided cap brain as a complex of T brains, then by applying this home functor to the I brain, uh, um, you get for free a complex of vector spaces with the action of differential on it, whose cohomology is the link homology. Um, the complex that you get from the projective resolution of your cap brain by applying this home factor is in fact the floor complex itself. Uh, a complex that's spanned by the intersection points of the brains, of your original brains, uh, with the action of the differential, that's the floor differential. In other words, this computes for you the action of the floor differential without counting an instantons. So we should view this um, equivalence as really half of homological mirror symmetry, which um, relates um, uh, relates the T brains to vector bundles on the mirror that generate the the mirror um, the mirror category of B brains. So this generalizes the very simplest example of homological mirror symmetry, where X and Y are simply a pair of infinite cylinders. The categories of brains on the two sides are each generated by, sing by a single brain. On the side of Y, you would just take a single real line Lagrangian 
a single, um, a T brain is just a single copy of a real Allen Lagrangian. Uh, on X, of course, you want a line bundle on X. So, well, of course, the two brains, generating brains look different than the morphism algebra, um, which I first learned from, a, um, uh, from well, uh, from work of Aru, <laughs> uh, manifestly the same if you understand the, the Foucault category as the Raph Foucault category. So both, um, so both um, the endomorphism algebra is simply the algebra of functions on the complex cylinder. And then homological mirror symmetry is really a consequence that relates uh, categories of B brains on X and A brains on Y is really a consequence of a pair of equivalences uh, relating the category of B brains to derived category of modules of the endomorphism algebra of the generator and vice versa for the Y. So you understand mirror, homological mirror symmetry in a manifest sense. So this simple example is a model for how you hope to understand homological mirror symmetry in all cases. So uh, when the algebra is GL1 slash one, then the morphism algebra of the T brain is um, the differential graded associative algebra of Lipschitz, Oswald, and Thurston. Um, uh, if the Lie algebra is SU2, then the morphism algebra of T brains turns out to be an ordinary associative algebra, which is a close cousin of the KLR double algebra of Kovanov, Lauda, Roque, and Webster. So I'll explain uh, how this comes about first for GL1 slash one, because it's simpler. Um, the description I'll give is essentially um, follows from work of a rule with some minor modifications. So as a vector space, the endomorphism algebra of the T brains is generated by their um, intersection points def defined by the Raph Foucault category. So if you think of intersection points um, as Reeb chords, whoops, sorry. Good. So, uh, so here we have some collection of punctures on the Riemann surface. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, we have 2D punctures. Okay, say if you have 2D punctures, um, the target space is a D dimensional symmetric product of copies of the Riemann surface. So uh, uh, the, 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 the T brain is, um, is up, uh, its direct summons up, uh, obtained in the following way uh, um, assign in all inequivalent ways, pick any, uh, pick any distribution of D real line Lagrangians. Okay, inequivalent. Inequivalent means uh, you're not, uh, if you pass through a puncture, you get a different brain. So basically, all possible orderings of real line Lagrangians on the cylinder. Okay, that's the sum over them. So it's a finite sum. Um, so if you if you think of uh, so here's a pair of uh, uh, of distinct uh, T brains, uh, one wrapped, one not. So um, anyway, if you think of the intersection points, which is as reap chords, which is what they fundamentally are, you get, uh, so here's a picture of the reap chord, you get a graphical representation of the algebra elements. Um, the algebra, the elements of the endomorphism algebra are configurations of D blue strings on a cylinder of unit height, whose vertical direction parameterizes the reap flow and whose circle direction is the circle direction of the Riemann surface. The blue strings uh, encode the intersection point as a path from a position of the uh, from brain to the to brain in the hum on the circle. Okay. Uh, so, for example, this specific intersection point maps to this path where the brains cross. Uh, if I had chosen this one, we would have get, gotten an identity morphism instead. The punctures on the Riemann surface get represented as orange green strings that are constant in uh, the reap time. Uh, you can um, read off the Maslow and equivariant gradings of uh, whoops, of um, uh, uh, as sums of degrees of string bits, and uh, the equivariant grade. So the, this is for the equivariant grading associated to Q. The one associated to winding around the cylinder uh, is, well, it's literally the winding number of the blue strings around the cylinder. The algebra um, product 
comes from um, the, fro the flow of product um, twisted by, by signs and translates um, into stacking cylinders um, and rescalings. Um, the, the twisting twisted signs uh, are the ones for from anyway uh, they're familiar to experts uh, from from Seidel's book um, to compute the algebra and um, to describe the resulting category um, we'll use the following um, strategy we'll um, consider the theory not on y itself but on y with the diagonal removed okay. So um, the diagonal divisor uh, corresponds to is a locus where any two points on the Riemann surface, where a pair of points on the Riemann surface comes together. So Y zero is simply a configuration space of D distinct points on the Riemann surface. Okay. The two categories uh, with and without the divisor removed uh, have the same object since both are based on Lagrangians uh, that avoid the diagonal. And uh, the intersection points are hence the same as well. So the generators of the floor complexes are, are the same as well. What, uh, what will differ are uh, the A infinity products. So we have the equivalence uh, of, um, uh, of the derived category of the category of Abrams on Y zero with uh, the category of modules of the algebra A zero which is the endomorphism algebra of the same T brains generating the category just in Y zero instead of Y. Now, um, the virtual working on the theory with the diag on the Y with diagonal removed is that the result, the resulting um, for uh, the, the resulting theory is very simple. Having deleted the diagonal in the symmetric product, the only maps uh, from a disk to Y that survive deletion of the diagonal are disconnected products of D one-dimensional maps to the Riemann surface. And a one-dimensional um, uh, uh, theory is very, very simple. That's the one setting where you can solve the theory by hand always. So um, certainly on, this, on the simple target is this. Um, so the relation in, um, uh, in the algebra say that um, string, string diagrams must have no excess intersection or uh, the algebra product vanishes. So you think of this as a product of two generators, which vanishes um, uh, due to excess intersection, uh, as well as uh, you get this kind of young Baxter move where the black strand here is either blue or the orange or the green strand. So as a result, uh, the algebra is zero is an associative algebra graded by cohomological and equivariant degrees. So uh, the theory on Y is um, one parameter deformation of the theory on Y zero, corresponding to filling in diagonal. Um, the deformation parameter is the instant uncounting or Novikov parameter, which will denote by H bar. So uh, uh, the H bar, to, um, uh, where the power of H bar counts the intersection number um, of the map to Y with the diagonal. So um, as, as vector spaces, the two algebras are the same because again, um, T brains like all other brains avoid the diagonal. So it's only the algebra structure that deforms. The deformation to H bar not equal to zero is very simple as well. Uh, the, what happens is that the algebra gains a non-trivial differential which is a cohomological degree one operator that um, simply removes a crossing uh, at the expense of inserting an eight power of H bar. In other words, it comes from disks that intersect a diagonal once and this operator squares to zero. So um, this differential um, comes from counts of empty rectangles. So they are projections of uh, maps to Y from a disk to Y, as I said, that intersect a diagonal once. So uh, this turns the algebra into a differential graded algebra. Um, what uh, I should have said is, is the following, that uh, in this theory, due to uh, the nature of the, of the holomorphic symplectic form, the theory ends up counting disks to Y that once projected to the Riemann surface, avoid all the punctures. Okay? And um, this condition is crucial in that uh, the whole, the, the, 
the endomorphism algebra of t-brains instead of in general being some um, a infinity algebra is just a differential graded algebra after you uh, include this um, action of this differential. So uh, for any Lie algebra, the same strategy of working in the complement of the diagonal divisor and then filling back in solves the theory. So <clears throat> in fact, understanding how to solve um, the two cases, GL1 slash one and SU2, suffices to solve the general case corresponding to a general Lie algebra. Um, so in the comp, so for the SU2 and GL1 slash one, the targets are the same, the symmetric products of D copies of the Riemann surface. Um, the key, um, so, and once you did a lead diagonal, um, they, um, the, the theories become literally the same <laughs> up to regrading. So the key difference between them is how the diagonal gets filled in. So um, for a general Lie super algebra, the mirror symmetry that relates uh, our target Y to its mirror X turns out to fit into a larger framework of mirror symmetries. Um, where um, in addition to the mirror symmetry that you get obviously by thinking about Y, you get, uh, um, you get uh, certain bigger spaces. So the upstairs Y, the big Y, <laughs> we'll call it big, because it fibers over the small y, our original y, with c star to the d fibers, while the small x embeds into a big X as a complex, um, as a submanifold of complex dimension d. So recall that points in y are collections of points on a punctured Riemann surface, colored by simple roots of the Lie algebra. In the upstairs y, every point, uh, um, uh, on the Riemann surface that's colored by a bosonic simple root of the Lie algebra um, uh, gets paired with a, a C star fiber with a stop on one end. The C star fiber with a stop on one end is um, a moniker for the upstairs superpotential, which makes each C star fiber with stop on one end mirror to C with a with standard equivariant action. Anyway, if your Lie algebra is an ordinary AD Lie algebra, all, uh, um, all uh, uh, roots are bosonic and every point uh, uh, on, on the base gets paired with, with such a fiber. Uh, so um, in particular, X, um, in particular, Y, the upstairs Y and the fibering over the downstairs one with holomorphic Lagrangian C star to the D fibers. Uh, if the Lie algebra is GL1 slash one, it has one single fermionic root. So then there's only the downstairs description. Now, <clears throat> the upstairs and downstairs theories, um, uh, when the upstairs exist, are related by, pa by pairs of adjoint functors. Um, the functor uh, on the B side uh, that um, goes up vertically, um, interprets um, a B brain on the downstairs, downstairs X as a B brain on the upstairs X. So these are standard functors that you get in the category of B brains. On the A side, um, these come from Lagrangian correspondences and the functor going diagonally just composes this with mirror symmetry. Um, in particular, the asymmetry between the cap and cup brains, the two brains that we had to um, associate to two halves of the knot uh, come from, um, existence of these pairs of adjoint functors. So the E brains, uh, uh, as it turns out, are obtained from the I brains by pushing up and sending back down. So for example, in the SU2 case, on um, the big X, the cap and cup brains are both uh, structure sheaves of P1s and uh, the images uh, of uh, the downstairs of the I brains and get sent by a functor that goes up and they get sent by uh, the figure eight brains by the functor that then sends the upstairs brain down. Anyway, the downstairs theories are easier to work with once you learn from these pairs of adjoint functors <coughs> which questions you, sh you should ask. So now the upstairs theories um, category is also generated by a finite set of brains whose um, endomorphism algebra makes the full upstairs mirror symmetry manifest. And in particular, 
when um, <clears throat> our Lie algebra is the ordinary simple, simply laced Lie algebra, uh, the upstairs X uh, is holomorphic symplectic, and this generator is the tilting generator of Bezdrakovnik and Kaladin. Now, um, the upstairs generators fiber over downstairs ones as real line Lagrangians, one in each C star fiber with a stop on one end. So um, if you just focus on, on, uh, on one uh, C star fiber, uh, the, the category with a stop on one end is the category mirror to uh, B brains on a single copy of C working equivariantly. And then uh, this is the corresponding generator. As a vector space, the, uh, and the morphism algebra of the upstairs generators is generated by uh, intersection points of the downstairs brains with coefficients in the endomorphism algebra of the fibers. So the intersection points of the downstairs brains on, on, on a symmetric product of cylinders, um, again, map to string diagrams on a cylinder, just like in the GL1 slash one theory, um, except now uh, there's only one kind of puncture. So all the, uh, all the fixed strands have the same color. Then the morphism algebra of the fibers is, uh, a copy of polynomial algebra in D variables, because for each of these uh, C star fibers, you get algebra of polynomials in one variable. Uh, so we'll call this um, um, B infinity because it's infinite dimensional. Uh, so multiplying an intersection point of the T branch downstairs by an element of this um, of the algebra of polynomials in D variables can be represented by uh, say post-composing each of the D blue strings by a corresponding number of, of dots. So uh, this would correspond to, uh, um, well, here you have these two and it would correspond to just picking uh, Z one to the zero and Z two squared. Anyway, this leads to a description of the entire upstairs theory as a category of, of A-brains downstairs with coefficient in, um, the derived category of modules for this uh, algebra B infinity, the polynomial algebra in D variables. Um, the functor um, that sends the upstairs theory down um, is uh, a Lagrangian correspondence. In general, it doesn't simply um, send uh, upstairs generators. So remember um, the harms we want, uh, downstairs uh, between brains th that are like this. They are an I brain and uh, its image obtained by, well, sending up and then back down by this pair of agent functors and then braiding. Okay. So um, the, the generators of the downstairs category you want to resolve these E brains in are obtained from the, from the upstairs generators by pushing down. Okay. And uh, the generator that sends the upstairs generators down uh, doesn't um, simply send the, the upstairs geometric brain to the downstairs geometric brain, reducing the theory to trivial coefficients. Instead, the functor that sends the upstairs theory down replaces this infinite dimensional algebra by its finite quotient, corresponding to um, setting the permutation invariant functions of Zs to zero. In general, Zs are um, uh, also labeled by simple rules. So you just permute those that are labeled by the same simple rule. So uh, this functor also equips um, the downstairs generators with a local system of modules for this, uh, for the algebra B, um, now, which is now a finite rank algebra, um, equal to the B itself. So to solve the theory, for uh, any G, uh, we'll, uh, as I said, we'll uh, um, start with Y0 with the diagonal removed. So for example, for Lie algebra SU2, uh, with the diagonal removed, the resulting generators are analogous, uh, the, re the resulting relations are analogous to what you get for GL1 slash one, oops, and uh, they include two new ones. Okay, um, the rule, you have to say what, uh, what if there are any, uh, any of these dotted generators left, what, they, what do they do? So just like in the GL1 slash one case, the degrees of all intersection points are sum of the degrees of string, string bits, 
except um, now they're all in Maslow degree zero because the root is bosonic. And every time your Lie algebra has only bosonic roots, namely still AD Lie algebra, uh, the whole theory will be only in Maslow degree zero. You get ordinary associative algebras. So filling the diagonal uh, back in, um, on general grounds, the only relations that can deform are these. And to understand this, uh, the deformation requires, um, in fact, counting a single disk. Um, everything else is fixed on degree grounds and also by associativity. If you ever try to count disks in a symmetric product, <laughs> you'll know why it's really important that you don't have to count many of them. Um, here, we only need to do one. And this is done in the joint paper with uh, Zhao and, and others that I listed the second paper. Um, in fact, the very same single disk count is necessary to understand the deformation in the SU2 case suffices to compute the algebra for general G. Again, associativity fixes everything. Um, so if G is an ordinary Lie algebra, the resulting upstairs algebra is a cylindrical KLRW algebra um, discovered by Kovano and Loud and by Roque and generalized by Webster to including these um, red strands. Um, the downstairs algebra is a quotient of it by two-sided ideal generated by these symmetric functions of the dots. So it follows that um, if you've um, heard or learned about or KL, heard talks about KLR double algebras, which were discovered in say 2006 or so, um, they were always phrased in terms of string diagrams. Now we know where these string diagrams come from. They're nothing but Reeb chords associated to intersection points of T-brains uh, gen um, that generate these rap for chi characters. Okay. Now, um, we also find, um, because now we actually know how to solve these theories, you find the generalization of the KLRW algebra to the superalgebra GLM slash N um, that was not known before. Um, so, and in particular, if um, G is an ordinary Lie algebra, together with Webster's work, um, this is a proof of homological mirror symmetry upstairs and also downstairs. So it proves this rectangle. So again, this is uh, joint work with Zhao and others. So now we want to go back and apply this to the problem of computing the action of the, of the floor differential, whose uh, cohomology should give us link invariance. As I, as I said before, if you have the projective resolution of these braided cap brains, you've solved the problem. Um, and while the, the equivalence of the derived Foucault category with the derived category of endomorphism algebra of the generators guarantees um, that such projective resolution exists, finding this resolution is one of those problems that's solvable in principle, though not in practice. So to find the resolution, you have to do two things. You have to compute which uh, modulo of the endomorphism algebra the brain maps to by the UNATA functor. And then you have to find the resolution of this module. So even if I hand you the module, so the first requires counting disk instantons. And the second is the kind of problem where if you hand it to an algebra, you will say, well, I have got better things to do uh, in general. So what we'll do here is we'll describe how to solve both of these problems at once. And the Existence of a geometric description is key. So, in fact, we can describe the story for SU2 and GL1 slash 1 largely in parallel. The key difference is that in the SU2 case, the resulting complex is always ordinary complexes uh, because everything, all the elements of the algebra are in degree zero, whereas for GL1 slash 1, you'll get twisted complex. Um, that um, Seidel's book told us that there are categories the Rafukai category should be uh, thought of as. Uh, so um, as a warm up, we'll start by um, a simple problem. Let's take a one dimensional theory where our target is simply the Riemann surface in cell. And in fact, this case will be fundamental for everything that follows. So actually, let's take the very simplest example of this um, cab brain uh, in GL1 slash one. So the brain uh, is a connected sum of two one-dimensional T brains over the intersection points at infinity, as you can see by simply isotoping the brain. Now you recall that if two one-dimensional Lagrangians intersect over a point, you get a new one-dimensional Lagrangian by taking their uh, connected sum at P. 
as an object of, of the category, the connected sum brain um, is equivalent um, to the complex over um, um, with, to the cone over the over over which is known as the cone over over p. So in one dimension, taking cones of amorphisms in the derived category has a geometric interpretation in as as taking connected sums. Um, so remove this. Yeah. So uh, our our e brain is then obtained by um, by uh, taking two of these T brains, which we'll label by T0 and T2, and um, taking connected sum over the intersection points in infinity. Now, every intersection point of T brains uh, has a known name in the algebra and a known degree. Uh, so the, the, these, uh, so for, uh, for this intersection point here, you get the following algebraic representation. And for this one, you get this. So the result is a twisted complex whose uh, differential um, squares to zero um, due to uh, algebra relations. Uh, usually when um, people uh, uh, define the category of twisted complexes, they want some kind of upper triangularity on the differential uh, or lower triangularity. Here you see you can't get, a, you, you, you can't really do that. <laughs> um, otherwise you, you will not get to describe the most elementary brain. Now, um, so this translates into algorithm for finding projective resolutions of arbitrary brains, both for GL1 slash one and SU2, as long as the target uh, is one dimensional or a product of one dimensional theories. So for example, if you take the cab brain in the SU2 theory, again, you can stretch it out to T brains um, and uh, get, get a picture of this brain as a connected sum of T brains over the infinity. Um, each intersection point and infinity is a specific element of the algebra of a cohomological degree zero, because it's the algebra is ordinary associative algebra and definite equivariant degree. Um, and actually to write the corresponding complex, you can in fact start with any one T brain and simply follow the maps as you go around the brain, um, uh, shifting degrees accordingly. And uh, organizing the result by cohomological degree, you get a complex that resolves the brain and a differential um, that's, that's guaranteed to square to zero by the nature of the geometric construction. Now, um, this example is somewhat special. Um, if you, this resolution may be familiar uh, if, if, you, if you think about coherent sheaves. It's a, it's a resolution of a structure sheaf of P1 in T star P1, which um, indeed is the upstairs mirror of the theory. So in fact, this resolution is a resolution not just downstairs, but also upstairs in the, for, uh, for, the, for the brains and the big Y. Um, and the example is somewhat misleading because in general, this doesn't happen. Namely, if you look at the, uh, a different brain, so for example, this braided brain, you follow the same steps, you find this complex, which as it should, describes the resolution of the brain downstairs, okay? On, um, where uh, in the one dimensional theory, all dots are zero. Now the downstairs theory has to know everything about upstairs theory. In fact, as we said, upstairs theory has a description as this um, category with coefficients uh, over, the, over the downstairs one. Um, so uh, we should be able to, from this picture, recover the, um, the full resolution of the upstairs brain. And in fact, you can. Uh, you only need to view this uh, relation that holds in the upstairs one-dimensional algebra as a deformation of the downstairs algebra by allowing disks that pass through punctures, okay? So U here is the, counts now the intersection with, um, with punctures of, of the map to, to, y, to the upstairs Y with the punctures. Anyway, the complex we got before deforms, it deforms exactly in one place, okay? For U is equal to zero, uh, you lose just one term. So um, by a single additional term, and the result closes in full upstairs algebra. And so for any u not equal to zero, you get a complex uh, of T brains equipped with a local system of modules for this B infinity algebra. All right, so the one dimensional theory and products of one dimensional theories can be solved. Now let's consider a theory for general D. So we'll start by uh, 
describing complexes that resolve the brains not on y, but on y zero with the diagonal result removed. So all our brains are products of one dimensional ones. And if you work on y with the diagonal removed, again, all the holomorphic maps to y, which are not products of one dimensional maps to copies of a are removed. So as a result, the complex that describes the brain as the object of the category with diagonal removed is simply a product of one dimensional complexes. Now, geometrically, each map in a product complex is a cone over intersection point of the form something non trivial in one place, so an identity map everywhere else. Okay, so basically, you're gluing one one dimensional brain at a time. That's what the product complex is, product of one dimensional complex is it. So having fun, so, and uh, those are easy to find. Again, uh, morphisms over all such maps and um, uh, are um, cones over all such maps are geometric. Um, so having found the complex that resolves um, the brain in the theory with the diagonal removed, you can find the complex uh, in the theory with the diagonal put back in using the fact that the theory on the honest y is an h bar, a known h bar deformation on the theory on y zero. So, uh, and it's really here where you, in this h bar deformation, where you count non trivial disks in the symmetric product. And our, um, so we'll start with a very simple example in the GL1 slash one theory that will serve to illustrate how uh, after the deformation, the complexes encode holomorphic disks that pass, pass through the diag diagonal, whose counting by hand is a difficult problem disk by disk. So co co consider the following sort of toy brain in the, G, um, in the GL1 slash one theory, which broken up into T brains looks like this. So here I've rotated our cylinder by 90 degrees um, and actually skipped the cylinder altogether. So now my T brains run vertically. It's easier to draw. So, um, so by itself, for example, this one single L1 brain has the resolution we got before. And if you take a product with a single T brain, you get uh, the following complex. So it differs from the original one by the maps that are associated that simply correspond to identity for the T2 brain. And uh, these maps know exactly what this picture is. In particular, it knows the relative positions of the brains. If I took this T brain and I moved it over, so it crossed the oval in one place, both of these maps, this one and this one, would each get a crossing and their degrees would shift. So it would, you would describe a different brain. So, uh, so these trans diagrams really will know exactly what, uh, exactly the, the all everything that's relevant for symplectic geometry of, um, of, of this brain. So if you take a product with the other T brain, uh, you get its own identity morphism there. Again, there are no crossings. And finally, the complex corresponding to gluing um, uh, the, the second brain, uh, taking the kinetic, connected sum over the intersection point at infinity for the second brain uh, is obtained by starting with the direct sum of the complexes you just got and turning on maps that correspond to gluing L2, okay? So the full complex um, can be written down explicitly. Its topology is actually of S1 times an interval because it knows about the topology of the brain. The resulted twist in differential closes uh, squares to zero in the algebra um, A0 uh, with the diagonal removed, but it doesn't close after the deformation. It doesn't square, it's not, it's not a differential in, uh, in the full algebra. Because in the full algebra, for the differential to close, you need to, uh, the differential has to solve a more cartonic equation, where del here is the differential of the algebra itself. The differential we found simply squares to zero, but it's uh, M1 is not zero. It's differential and uh, is, isn't zero. So to find the differential that closes, you look for deformations that um, have uh, that 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 have consistent that you can put on this complex that 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 close in the full algebra. So in this case, there's a single correction term that's allowed by the grading, 
um, that you have to put in for the differential to actually be an honest differential in the full algebra. And if you were to take a harm with, uh, say, this eye brain, you find that the formation that, uh, of the complex that you found actually captures this disk. Okay, so um, the disk is the one uh, is the is the non-trivial disk in a symmetric product uh, of this theory. So its projection to the Riemann surface looks like this, the shaded diagram. So uh, for SU two, you follow the same. Uh, 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 the same story, so to see the same baby example. And uh, you find that the resulting deformed differential counts a different kind of disk, a disk that passes through the diagonal and the puncture once okay, and contributes to the floor differential. So uh, the algorithm can be run in principle for arbitrarily complicated brains, starting with uh, uh, the products of one dimensional complexes, which are elementary to write down, which by construction closed in the, in the theory with the diagonal removed and then deforming for the full, to the full theory. And this generalizes an explicit algorithm to computing arbitrary link homologies um, for, for other Lie algebras as well. You just, the brains change. Now the resulting uh, um, homologies are themselves invariants of links. To show this, you need to show that several moves hold. Um, the two non-obvious ones are, are these, um, the stabilization move and uh, this mark of one type move. The first uh, in the GL1 such one context um, translates the, the these two brains being equivalent that you can pass um, objects of the category. And the second uh, translates the this kind of statement. So now you've, it's a stabilization move so it involves series of different dimensions. It turns out that both follow from a single statement, which says that you can pass the T brain uh, through an E brain at the, at the expense of some degree shifts. Okay. The degree of shifts are, are, are uh, um, so, um, are essentially come from framing plus um, cohomological degree shift. Anyway, both equivalences are easy to prove in our in our framework because uh, they hold actually um, in a stronger sense than they needed to. They hold hold this homotopy equivalences for underlying complex, and you find that the two complexes um, that the homotopy equivalence holds only if h bar is not zero. So in a theory with h bar is equal to zero, you would uh, recover the, um, the quantum link invariant um, as the Euler character, but the homology would be wrong. It would be wrong because in particular, it wouldn't be a link invariant. Okay. Um, so here, the homology group themselves are link invariants. So we have explicit mathematical programs to compute uh, well, Mathematica is not a language to choose <laughs> of choice for, for, for this kind of problem, but anyway, we are, we are not programmers. Anyhow, so we have uh, explicit Mathematica programs to compute link homologies of arbitrary two bridge and um, um, two, two bridge knots and links for SU2 and GL1 slash one theories, and also reduce link homologies for three bridge links. So in the SU2 case, uh, in all cases we've checked, the theory produces covenant homology, including torsion. And the size of the floor complex, whose cohomology is the link homology, grows polynomially rather than exponentially in the number of crossings. So, for example, for the trifoil, you get a following pair of brains. The theory computes for you the floor complex, which as a complex over C looks, looks as follows. Okay. So you'll find the complex that resolves this braided uh, E brain and then take the home with the I brain. That taking the home with the eye brain uh, produces a bunch of vector spaces and maps the, the differential of the brain to a differential uh, between the resulting vector spaces. And this is what you read up. The resulting complex is 18 dimensional. Um, there's, um, there's one term exactly for one intersection point of the brains, um, which should be compared to a 30 dimensional complex that Kavanaugh defined. And, uh, if the very same complex with uh, C replaced by Z rep reproduces, once you take a homology, it reproduces covenant of homology, including torsion. Um, so uh, that's how the theory looks. So, um, okay, so this is all I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I'm going to ask Sarah to see if 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 I'
Oh, very good. Excellent. So um, if G is an AD Lie algebra, uh, the upstairs space is a holomorphic symplectic. If it's a Lie super algebra other than GL1 slash 1, they're not. Um, they're just, uh, they're, they're, they're just uh, collabial, but they're not uh, holomorphic symplectic. Yeah, so the upstairs, good. So the upstairs X space is, um, is if, uh, if G is an AD Lie algebra, it's a, it's a Coulomb branch of an um, three dimensional N equals to the three dimensional gauge theory with N equals to four supersymmetry, uh, which is a quiver theory where the quiver uh, the, based on the Dickin diagram of the corresponding Lie algebra. What's miraculous. And so the connection of 3D n equals to four theory to representation theory is well known. Uh, it turns out that um, that uh, if you look at the Lie uh, algebra GLN plus n, the connection of 3D theory to representation theory continues, except it's a 3D n equals to two theory. Um, so uh, so the upstairs x space is the Coulomb branch of the 3D n equals to two theory, and the upstairs y space is the two dimensional mirror. So you look at for occasion of the Alexander polynomial. So in downstairs, you take some symmetric product of the complex field upstairs and that polygraph and the vibration complex moment. But we know that if you take symmetric product of the complex So 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 for, for GL1 plus one, there's no upset. That, that there is a hypotic ground. Sorry? There is a hypotic ground in the upstairs. Uh no, so the downstairs space is just a uh, symmetric product of Riemer surfaces. The, the, the resulting, so you can understand the topology, which, so originally the story comes from really super string theory, where ADE theories come from type two string theory on an AD surface times C. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the, the sort of C direction is why the upstairs picture is the fact that so the quivers are the quivers associated with sheaves supported on two cycles of the AD singularity. And in AD times C, every such two cycles can be four. Okay. So to get the GLN slash M, you'll start, you'll look at some generalized point For GL1 slash one, you just get O minus one plus O minus one over P1. Uh, the resulting quiver, three-dimensional and equals to two theory comes from the quiver of the conflict essentially. But that here has no deformation. You can't you you can't move it. So there's no upstage. I know that some people have written hypertorgra in the context in the, the, the theory related to Hager floor theory, Mannion and others have written some kind of hypertorgra, which I, I actually don't understand. If, if that's a, Mannion and Loud, I think. If they if their work you're mentioning, I don't know why their hypertoric spaces arise as they, as they do. Maybe there's some explanation, but it doesn't follow the other thing. Thank you again.